Most people in life are looking at how do I make a life worth living and a retirement worth having. The one suggestion that as an old person who is somewhat seasoned in the world of men and in selling business opportunities to the families of my community, as well as the entrepreneurs who are part of a professional networking community in the greater aspect of Indianapolis is to teach people how to behave themselves. When they fail themselves is when they start to interfere in someone else's life without permission. They start to lie, they start to cheat, they start to create medical records not their own and not the right to do. They interfere with people's cell phones, they hack their computers, they delete files, they destroy files, and they think it's pretty funny. They are little boys, little girls trapped in their minds. They are not understanding what they're doing is completely a lie. They are fully invested in their lie. They are fully invested in their abuse of someone's life, they are fully invested in their harassment on someone's life, and they are fully invested in a way that makes no sense. You see, the sense of a person is what's visible when you do shit like that. Your common sense has clearly gone out the window and you have failed your own life completely. Your belief was, I will sit in power like Julius Caesar over someone's life. I will sit in power like King Herod in the Bible who lied, stole, and cheated Jesus out of life. I will act like a centurion and try to police someone's life, much like the police of Jesus' day did to ruin Christ's life. Can you imagine how many more miracles, how many more things, how many more people would have been fed, how many more souls would have been saved if Jesus would have been allowed to be himself and not forced to bleed or be bled? In life, we have people who don't understand Christ. They claim to be Christian, but they're not Christian. They're probably more atheist or they're probably more agnostic or maybe they're just haters of religion. You see, a hater of religion will use a few Bible verses to tout at someone that they don't like and they don't understand instead of expecting the truth that the Lord God made every single human being in the land. The Lord God made every single problem in the world is sort of also truth. And the truth is that when people lie, steal, cheat, steal cell phones, interfere with data, ruin records, steal intellectual property, abuse copyright laws because they don't know what they are because they're stupi too stupid or weren't paying attention in 7th grade law classes, then maybe they need to go to jail. When they aid and abet the abuse of someone's life, meaning they participate in stalking, they participate in passing information along, they participate in saying, hey, he's here. No big deal. Just want you to know. Shit like that, it literally ruins their lives because they end up aiding and abetting things they don't really know or don't want to know is going on for that person, you know? So they could be aiding and abetting a medical rape, which is where people decide, I'm going to commandeer your body after drugging your food. I'm going to take you away for a week and I'm going to investigate your body. I'm going to do whatever the hell I want to it. I'm going to make records like they're lawful and then I'm going to claim that you're mentally unwell so that I can tell you that you're mentally unwell and I can feel better for my lying, my stealing, and cheating another human being in the land out of their medical privacy rights. A person's genitalia is also a private nature of thing and yet there are police officers in our jails who literally will sexually assault and sexologize in their own way someone's life. They won't do it exactly in jail but they will. They'll tie a man's beard and then it's not. They'll shave his genitalia just so they can take a peek. And none of that was for the reason that the man couldn't make bail. His own sibling said, eh, let him stay in jail. Who cares about him? That'll give us more time to play with our father's estate. That'll give us more time to manipulate our mom into a mental state of hating her youngest child. But that's life, right? People like to play that game. We saw that in the Bible many times with Jacob and what we like to call in the musical world the technical green dream code but the reality is that Jacob was a prophet and God gifted him that in response to what he'd been through people who are constantly abused constantly harassed constantly sexualized and constantly assassinated in their soul are often given gifts of the soul by God this is to teach the Christians of the world to teach the Wiccans of the world that they have lost their ways of God and when they sit around and they play around and they piss around and they try and ruin people's computers, ruin their lives, they just prove that they have no life. They have no plan for their life because clearly they just want to end up in jail. But when you don't know the other things that people are doing as a part of the larger scheme of your gaming community, you better fucking believe every single one of you can be seen by that satellite in the sky. Every single one of you can be seen through the video camera on your phone. And if you're playing with someone's phone because you stole it off them when they were sleeping, like what happened to me, I guarantee you those companies know who you are and they can see you today. I guarantee you because I've let them know. 
this phone got stolen and there are coding within your phone that attach to the sites of what you're visiting so what they know is what phones for example I'm using or what computer I'm using to get to my social media channels to do my business to plan my life to use my marketing skills and literally to get myself into a new and better fully paid life you on the other hand are stupid about cellular technology that the actual military runs those fucking satellites in the sky is somewhat truthful and what they're watching you in your black bastard way is thinking that you're above someone else who is white and no offense but we are beyond the days of race we are don about beyond the days of color discrimination but if you're going to create radical panther movements of, of, of racial uh, bias and of reverse racialism or reverse racism you should go to jail we have spent a lifetime trying to eradicate and get rid of those uglinesses, those versions of hate, and those ideas that somewhere in the world somebody owes you something. In America, nobody owes you a fucking thing except the freedom to let your bell ring, the freedom to light up like a Christmas tree when you fall in love, and the freedom to have relationships and have sexuality and to have other things that you desire for your own body, your own state of mind, your own emotional health, and your own spirituality, whatever that may be. When you practice hateful religions, you have proven to God that you don't want him. When you practice hateful attacks on people's life, you prove that you're not of God. And you just think, no big deal, I don't believe in God, I don't believe in hell, I don't believe in that. Well, that's great. Most people say that. Most people can't believe that they got to hell once they get there. They really don't believe it. They thought that because they believed 316, they were going to do something. Today, I'm looking over some of my artwork that was on a thumb drive, and I find somebody monkeyed around with all my work ruined it, deleted the slides, and then rebuilt and resaved the slides like a monster in the night. What a foolish little Chinese boy you are. What a stupid little Korean girl you are. What an idiotic, maronic little black child that didn't know what the laws of the land are because all I see is you might be over 20, you might be over 21, but what you're behaving as, like the boy that pittered by me today while I was doing a radio cast, literally interrupting my show completely rudely, trying to solicit me, did I want water? Did I go, no, fucker, I am 53 years old. If I want water, I'll go fucking buy it myself. Or I've got a lovely little girl who might care for me, who might bring me some water. But she knows what I want in that water. Not you, motherfucker, and I'm not gay. And I've seen you on campus sexing the Arabs today. So don't you fucking play with me. I am not your little sex-soliciting fella. I'm not gay, motherfucker. But that's how I feel. And that's my passion to tell you. But I'm not telling you about my sexuality. I'm saying these are people of Satan. They think that they have the right to interfere with a life like a child in the night or a child during the day I don't know of any man of my age demographic that starts and initiates a conversation that way I don't know of anyone from my level of affluence or influence or education that starts a conversation that way unless you're a 20 year old Catholic boy who doesn't know what else to say whose father failed to teach him how to socialize you see when my late father was dying and he was sort of losing his ADLs he was sort of also crying and a little bit uh, losing his ability to socialize and he was a great orator he could give super presentations and what I see in my extended family is that they have taken on some of those skills they were passed through other siblings but here's the reality my late father was not able to carry a table so when I would go and have breakfast with him as he requested so that he would have someone to pay attention to him and I got him the crash hat for his falling and the difficulty he was having with his illness and I sat there at the table it was my job to keep the men at that table talking it wasn't all talk about me it was encouraging these men who are senior citizens, who are elderly, who barely get a chance to really talk, let alone eat, within some peace without some little 20-year-old pittering by and interrupting us all. But the reality is what I said to them is, tell me about your life story. How did you meet your wife? What did you do for a living? What's your career like? Now, I can put all that out there, and then some motherfucker will come up to me tomorrow and ask me these damn questions. And my attitude is, please, go do your life. Absolutely, go do your life. Because I'm not here for your life. I'm here for my life. And it doesn't mean I'm selfish. It means I have made an establishment of where I'm going, what I'm doing, who I'm pursuing, what targets I have for my marketplace. And you are not a part of that demographic scope. And it doesn't mean I'm not going to be neighborly, but when you're trying to play with me, when you're trying to interfere with my cell phones, when you're trying to ruin my computers, when you're trying to destroy my intellectual property, I sit there and look at you and go, what the hell goes? Are you that pathetic in your own life? Are you that depressed about your own life? Are you that foolish in your independent life that you think that that satellite in the sky can't see what you're doing with your duplicate phone with your stolen phone and with your attitudes in life 